Hello everybody, this is Porter Nilsson with Random R Attack. Today we're going to be looking at the basic features of a program called A-Sprite. Within this program, we're going to be making different sprites for our two-dimensional game that we're making. Now that we're in A-Sprite, the first thing that you can do is create a new file. I want my sprites to be kind of small on the screen, so I'm going to make it 64 by 64. With our new document created, I'm now going to limit the color palette because I want my whole game to only use a total of 10 different colors. So how do we do that? You go to the very left, you select all these colors, and then hit to delete on the keyboard. Now when we want to add new colors, all you have to do is select a new color, and hit this little exclamation mark right there. It lets you know that this is not in the color palette, and then you just click right here. So really, I'm only going to have three colors more or less, an orange, a blue, and a green, but then different shades of those same colors, so that that's nine total colors. And then I want one kind of off-white color for highlights. So now I have ten different colors within this. I'm going to go ahead and select dark color. And now holding control, you can scroll with the middle mouse button to change the size of the pixels. I'm going to go ahead and make it a one pixel by one pixel. I'm going to go ahead and sketch just a really quick sketch of a fish. So the theme of the game is going to be almost underwater Cthulhu-like monsters are trying to kill us and we're just trying to survive these waves. So I want to make a fish that's not a normal looking fish, just slightly off, right? A little creepy. Maybe it has an extra eye or maybe it just longer fang sort of thing. Or I could use an angler fish because those things are creepy. Now that we have the basic shape of the fish made, we're going to start to layer on different colors. You can easily make a new layer by hitting Shift N. And then if you just drag and drop these, you can put the layers anywhere you want. So we're going to go ahead and put the line art at the very bottom. And then we're going to make a solid color over top of this, the very darkest color that the fish is going to be. Now that you have that done, we're going to build up to the brighter colors. So we're going to pick the next brightest color and start to put in some detail into the fish. And then we're going to pick an even brighter color and put that on top of that. Slowly building up until it looks really good. It's kind of like three-dimensional shapes. I'm just layering on different layers in my mind. And so it's kind of like sculpting with pixels. I love it. And once we get to something that we like, we need to go ahead and add some highlights for the eyes to give it that creepy look. So I'm going to go ahead and select maybe this white color and bada bing bada boom. There you go. Now you could add different colors to this as well instead of just this one color. But I kind of like the creepy nature of this. So now we have an enemy, this anglerfish looking thing. Super creepy. We need another enemy in the game that maybe explodes. So we want to do a puffer fish. We're going to do all the things that we just barely did to practice the skills. So first, I'm going to create a new image, 64 by 64. But I don't want to recreate this palette, right? So how do I do that? Well, if you go ahead and go to the old palette, you can save this out anywhere you want. And then you can input, import this new palette into the different things. So. I have this palette that I'm going to use for all of my assets in the game. And now I'm going to go ahead and load this up. And now I can start to sketch out my new puffer fish. Create new layers. Add darker levels. Less dark levels. Lighter levels. Highlights. And then I'm done with the puffer fish. It's that easy. How cool is that? How neat is that? Neat. <laughs> Sorry. Inside joke. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Anyways, we're now going to add animation. So in this one, I actually want a 32, excuse me, 64 by 128 document. The reason for this is I'm going to make some seaweed that just moves in the not wind, water. <laughs> That's right, we're underwater. Moves in the water. I don't want to add too much detail, so I'm just going to sketch out really quickly what the seaweed's going to look like. Like this. New frames are added with Alt N, and you can add as many as you want. So I'm just going to add a couple do 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 do, like that. And now, as you go to frame to frame, you'll see that all the pixel work disappears, so you don't know exactly what you're sketching. So, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and hit this onion skinning so that you can see previous frames as you're making animations. And now for each of these frames, I'm going to go ahead and keep sketching out the basic movement 
of the seaweed. I just kind of want it to flow back and forth and back and forth, and that's it. Now, here's a cool trick. We want it to bounce back and forth between the different states, right? So I can just select this frame, hit Control C, copy that over, and now I can just have it bounce back and forth as I go from frame one, two, three, four, and then it will bounce back to one, like that, and it works. Also, you'll see that my, my seaweed's not quite center. So I want to center that right here. There we go. And here, let's go ahead and play this and see how that looks. Nice. Now I follow the exact same workflow that I did for the puffer fish. Dark colors, middle colors, light colors. And then I do this from frame to frame to frame until I'm happy with the animation. We only have two more things to do, the floor and the main character. So let's do the tileable floor first. That was hard for me to say. Tileable floor, whatever. So first 64 by 64, new document, same as everything. Up here, go to view, tile mode, X and Y. And now everything that you draw, it will actually show how it's going to tile or not. And so we can make a tileable asset. That's really cool. Once again, neat, <laughs> sorry. I do want to add one more new color to the palette, so I need to import my old palette, etc. Or let's just pick this really dark color here, something that stands out so that you can see the, both the monsters and the player, and they don't blend into the background, obviously. Okay, so I still want it to be similar, so it's just gonna be a different shade of this. And now, here we go, I just want a little bit of maybe like seashells or little rocks here and there using the same techniques that we did. Dark color, building up to light, but I want to keep this really muted. So I only want um, it to, to have one or two colors at most for these different objects. All right, now we have everything done except the main character. This is gonna be the hardest one, but we're gonna do the same steps that we've done all the way up. New file, 64 by 64, sketch it out, base color on a new layer, highlight, highlight, highlight except we want to add this new orange color to this to, to make it really pop, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then here's my base. Now I build this guy up all the way instead of doing some animations because I want to see what he looked like. Now let's create different frames by hitting Alt N. Let's just do about three or four here. And now that I have him copied out, I'm just gonna kind of have him move up and down as he kind of walks along, right? So I can go ahead and select the move tool with V I can move him up and down and up and down like that. And now if I hit play, you can see it's kind of animated, kind of. <laughs> Not really, right? But we can start to flesh this out. For example, when he goes up, maybe he stretches up just a little bit. So I can marquee tool this, and then I can stretch him up. And then when he lands, I can squish him down just a little bit. And so he kind of bounces. It's more of a bounce than a walk. Then if I want, I can also just kind of delete pixels in the different frames and then just add pixels. So if I want to move the feet a little bit, I can do that here, etc. And there we go. We got an animated dude. Here we have all the sprites for our game and we made it in less than eight minutes. Pretty, pretty good. You thought I was going to say neat. Ha <laughs> gotcha. And though we think we're done, we still need to export all, all these awesome things, right? So go to File, Export. This is good for exporting single sprites. But if you want to do a sprite sheet, you just go down a little bit and export sprite sheet. Then you can pick the different types of export options, rows, columns, etc. You can just pick whatever you want. And that's it. If you would like access to these sprites, you can become a Patreon patron and you'll get access to these sprites. We'll keep on making more and more of this video game. In the next tutorial, we're gonna import all these sprites in and we're gonna to start to set up the framework that way. All right, see you next tutorial, bye. I forgot. I forgot to say like and subscribe because as weird as this is, it actually helps the statistics of people liking and subscribing when people say this at the end of their videos. Let's see if it's true. Are you gonna actually hit that like button or the unlike button?
Oops, you slipped and hit the light button. Okay, this is getting old. Neat. <laughs> Bye, guys.